Hello, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Engineering Today. And I hope you're all having a great time. We've got breaking news. SpaceX has received the green light from the Federal Aviation Administration to launch the ninth test flight of Starship. This comes after the agency completed a detailed investigation into the problem that occurred during the last flight in March. Now, SpaceX is ready to move forward. The same Super Heavy booster from Flight 7 will be used again for Flight 9. This is a big moment for SpaceX, as it shows progress in their goal of building fully reusable rockets. Because of past mishaps and the large area where debris can fall, the FAA has expanded the safety zone for this upcoming flight. For Flight 9, the aircraft hazard area will stretch about 1,600 nautical miles. It will cover space from the launch site in Texas, across the Straits of Florida, and over parts of the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. This is nearly double the 885 nautical miles covered during Flight 8. To reduce interruptions to air traffic, the FAA is making sure the launch happens during quiet hours when fewer planes are flying. SpaceX hasn't officially said when Flight 9 will happen. However, notices about airspace closures suggest that Tuesday, May 27th, might be the date. If that holds, we could be just days away from seeing another giant Starship rocket rise into the sky. All eyes are on Ship 35 on the 21st of May 2025 at SpaceX Starbase Texas, showing Starship 35 moving to Massey's test site for the third time for testing ahead of Starship Test Flight 9. And the 23rd of May 2025, the Ship 35 performing a spin prime test. Hopefully, we are less than 120 hours away from the launch. There's a lot riding on Flight 9. It's not just about proving the ship won't fail mid-flight. This time, SpaceX wants to go a step further, getting the data needed for future ship-catching attempts. That's one of the most complex challenges left before Starship can become fully reusable. Catching a ship after re-entry would be a game-changer. But to do that, SpaceX first needs to collect flight data from stable, controlled descents. Flights 7 and 8 gave some of that, but more is needed before a real catch attempt. Payload delivery is another major goal. Without reliable payload delivery, none of the Mars plans move forward. And speaking of Mars, Elon Musk recently said he'll be giving an update on the company's Mars strategy before Flight 9. There's debate about which Mars launch window is realistic, but the fact that SpaceX is still building toward it shows confidence. Internally, Mars is still the target. Timelines have shifted before, but that goal hasn't. The community's ready. Everyone's waiting for Flight 9 to launch and deliver better results. But many are also looking forward to Block 3. This next version of Starship is already taking shape at the production site. Block 3 isn't just an upgrade, a major step forward. While Block 2 focused on structural changes and avionics, Block 3 will include taller ships, larger fuel tanks, and full Raptor 3 engine integration. We've seen early signs of this in TT-17, Ship 39, and Ship 40, which use new tile systems and different heat shield layouts. These might be metal tiles, a shift that could make Starship faster to reuse by avoiding damage to traditional ceramic tiles. Progress on the ground hasn't slowed either. The orbital launch mount at Starbase has been moved into position above the flame diverter, placed carefully using SpaceX's biggest crawler cranes. There's heavy welding happening underneath to lock it in. Some thought it would be bolted down, but as usual, SpaceX is doing it their own way. This setup also hints that the Pad B OLM won't be quickly replaceable. SpaceX is aiming for durability over flexibility here. Pad B's chopsticks also saw some heavy-duty testing. Over the weekend, they were used to lift huge water bags, fluid weights, to test their lifting capability. These are standard in crane and rig testing and offer a flexible, 
reusable way to simulate loads. This kind of testing isn't new, Pad A used it too. It's classic SpaceX, use what's available, save money and speed up development without cutting corners. On the other hand, President Donald Trump stood in the Oval Office and announced one of the most ambitious defense projects in U.S. history, the Golden Dome. He promised that this missile defense system would protect the United States from aerial attacks and be fully operational by 2029. The estimated cost? $175 billion, at least according to Trump. But the Congressional Budget Office has a very different outlook, warning that it could cost up to $831 billion over the next 20 years. Despite criticism and doubts about whether the system is realistic, major defense companies are already lining up to be part of it. One of the top contenders? SpaceX. Elon Musk's space company could become a key builder of the Golden Dome, according to recent reports. This would be a huge step for SpaceX, known for changing how the world sees space travel with reusable rockets, private astronaut missions, and rapid satellite launches. The company could now become part of a U.S. military project unlike any before it. The Golden Dome is inspired by Israel's Iron Dome, a missile defense system that targets short-range rockets. But the U.S. version would be much larger and more complex. It aims to stop long-range threats, like intercontinental ballistic missiles. Experts say this is far more difficult than anything the Iron Dome has handled. Past attempts by other countries and the U.S. to build such systems have failed or been canceled due to cost and technical limits. Trump says this project will put U.S. weapons in space. A first, in January, he signed an executive order telling the Pentagon to start working on it. He called missile threats the most catastrophic threat facing the United States, though he didn't explain exactly which threats he was talking about. Analysts argue that countries like China and Russia are unlikely to launch direct attacks. That raises a big question, is this system actually necessary? Still, many defense contractors are excited. Companies like Lockheed Martin have already shown interest. In an interview, Lockheed Martin's CEO, James Taslett, said the project could create many U.S. jobs. He also pushed his company as a top choice to help build the system. SpaceX, however, might have an edge. The company has proven it can launch payloads into orbit regularly and at lower costs than its competitors. It's built a powerful launch infrastructure with facilities in Texas, Florida, and California. Its Starlink satellite network has shown how fast it can deploy tech in space. That kind of speed and flexibility could be exactly what a system like the Golden Dome needs. Reports suggest that Elon Musk's relationship with Trump could also play a role. Musk has supported Trump's re-election with over $250 million in contributions. The Golden Dome project has already become a magnet for controversy. Critics call it unworkable and a massive waste of money. They point to the high cost, the technical challenges, and the likelihood that the threats it's supposed to defend against might never happen. Some also say it's a way to funnel huge amounts of taxpayer money into the hands of Trump-connected contractors. For SpaceX, though, the opportunity is clear. If it secures a major role, it would not only expand its influence in national defense, but also boost its already massive revenue stream. The company has previously won large military contracts for satellite launches and communication systems. A deal this size would take things to another level. Whether or not the project actually gets built and whether it works remains to be seen. But one thing is clear, SpaceX is not just reaching for the stars, it's aiming to shape the systems that protect them. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting. And kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.